Today we have a very special guest in our Tier 9 network, Walk Talk with Max Zumer. Who is Max Zumer? He's the CEO of one of the last decade's innovation on mobility. Yes, I'm talking about the Flexbus. Welcome to Max to our Tier 9 network show. Thank you very much. So how, uh, when the uh, 2013 on beyond that, how your founders thought about integrating uh, technology-based uh, mobility? So it was actually in 2013, there was a, a change here of the legislation. So the market was opened. Before that, the state railway had a monopoly on long distance passenger transportation, including bus. But when 2013, this all of a sudden opened up and private players were allowed in the space. And of course, everybody knew about this. So a lot of, a lot of big players tried it and a lot of startups. And the founders at the time had the vision that if you want to be successful in this against all the incumbents, against all the companies that have been doing this for ages, you have to bring a different angle. And that's why they said we have to do this tech first. We have to do this asset light and we have to rethink completely how this business is run. Uh, just to uh, a very common question with Spartan and in everywhere the, is a quest of how uh, the three, I think three startups come together as their friends or what was the beginning of thought? It, uh, the idea came of uh, in a beer bar or coffee table. Yeah. On a in an evening and or a dream dream. What was the initiated the best idea to do it like this? Yeah, that's an. I mean, they they go back quite a long time. So Daniel, the CIO, and Andre, the the CEO, mm. um, they're old friends. They mm. actually founded their first startup, I think, when they were still in school. Ah, great. One being the CIO, <laughs> the other one trying to make some business out of this. Yeah. And um, so they had a long history, and mm. and they always knew that they wanted to do something together. And Jochen and Andre um, knew themselves from the previous company from BCG. Mm. And the three of them, they were actually looking for founding something. So they, they didn't have the idea and then said, we have to do this, but it was the other way around. They were looking for something and they were looking at all kinds of different possibilities. And then this one was the obvious one. They just knew about this liberalization happening and they knew that this was what they had to go for. Uh, great, but uh, when this first, uh, what is the first deal they striked? I was actually, I mean, the biggest thing is, um, Imagine you're, um, you're three guys and you have some PowerPoint slides. Yeah, yeah. You, you go out there and tell everybody, look, this is a great business yeah. idea. But the only thing you have are these, these, uh, these slides. So the first and most important thing was signing your first bus partner. Yeah. And this was, I mean, the, the major event when they found somebody that kind of believed in yeah. the story and believed particularly in the three guys and actually kind of went out and bought real buses and yeah. said, I'm going to run these. I'm going to make them your colors and, and run those for you. Uh, great, but uh, I want to know the, what is first deal uh, your founder struck. Yeah, that was, I mean, amazing. It was actually in, in that time, the Flixbus was still blue. Mm. So they had their first uh, blue bus on the street. Mm. And I mean, it was an amazing thing because this is when it kind of became from just, you know, some, some slides and something on mm. paper to actually seeing the first bus on the road. Which city I have a curiosity to know about, my viewers should know, but the, which is the first of the three great ideas and from the school days, that's the important thing. Yeah. So a school kid can think about uh, startup. And what was the, uh, the first city, the, the first bus went to where? To, to who? Where? The first line was uh, Munich to, uh, to Nuremberg. And Nuremberg is also, it's, it's the, the hometown of the founder. So this was the, the first line they offered. So the great. Max, we have just talked about uh, how the three school kids have had vision and dream and reality today. What are the big buildings and worldwide flicks known? So what was the, uh, the, the when after the startup, the first uh, Munich to Nuremberg, the journey starts and how you evolve with uh, uh, your internationalization, global plans. What was uh, first you had started with Germany and then Europe and how what what your uh, founders and your management team got an idea need to go to global? What thoughts provoked them or triggered them rather to have more international flex as a brand? Yeah. So. The, those first two years when the, when, when the market in, uh, in Germany had opened were intense competition. As I said, a lot of companies started their um, businesses and tried their luck. In the end, there was two startups, Mein Fernbus and Flixbus, that made the race and that after one and a half years were the ones that had built the biggest business. And then the Flix founders, um, they, always had, they always thought very big and, and had this vision that you know, they want to build this big business. They actually um, found money with a private equity firm with our first big investor, um, General Atlantic. And they took over Mein Fernbus, the actually larger competitor. And then 
after that integration of mein Fernbus and Flixbus, the two successful big startups, the position in, in Germany was great. And then the obvious question was, what do we do next? Yeah, yeah. And then um, <clears throat> I actually, um, I, I was interested in the business and I had a, a very casual lunch with um, Andre and Jochen, so two of the founders. Um, in a little pizza place yeah. around the old office. And, and they told me a little bit about the company and that they now wanted mm. to grow this internationally. Um, and it was it was a casual conversation. I was I, I found it interesting, but I didn't yeah. know a lot about yeah. it. And then at the end of the lunch, they said, okay, so are you interested? Do you want to do this with us and, and build the international business? And I was like, I probably have to think about that. But like, I mean, I think a couple of days later, I said like, yeah, I want to do it. Like, let's let's do this. And so, and that decision is also very tough because you are in a nice position on a good consulting farm yeah. worldwide, and then have a small startup. It How was, that? Yeah. What do you you also think about a little bit of uh, your mind and the back of the mind to do something innovative with a startup to support? Yeah, it was this this opportunity was exactly what I was looking for. I wanted to have something that had a proof of concept already, but then just scale it and and you know just drive it to new geographies and this was perfectly in line with with what i wanted to do so for me it was very exciting but of course you go from like a, a safe job with you know a decent pay to like yeah. you trust these guys and they mm. say it's a, we have a great idea and we're going to take this global and you have to trust them mm. and, and go with it so it was a big step but i mean i never for a second regretted doing it because i mean this was the most exciting germany i uh, think the most exciting journey that you know you could be a part of Max, don't you think you have some of your mind of doing startup? This is your uh, some of your young days when you talk about. Definitely, there is an uh, <clears throat> your unconscious mind to do something this kind of stuff, which is triggered to when they met uh, your founders, and then uh, 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 you have to take a big decision to a nice salary, decent job, and come to an, an uh, of course big ideas, pursuing a big dreams. So, what was your mind from that point of time when you took the decision to quit this and come to a, a better journey? Yeah, I, I think I always have this. I always have this notion that I feel like you have to sometimes you have to do brave moves, even if you're if you don't know a hundred percent what's going to happen. But the I, I always feel like the most interesting interesting things happen if you take a bold step and you know do something, even if it's not the safe next step, but just you know going out there and trying new things. And then what when after joining? What was your bold step to be uh, next level for Fixbacks? I mean, when when you look at the story, so we we started a little bit opportunistically looking around, like we 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 had built the business in Germany, and then we looked at all the other markets around. We looked at France and at Italy, and then started the business where we could. And there was after Germany was liberalized, France had also rumors that they were going to liberalize the French market market, which was also closed. And at the time. Uh, Macron was still a minister under Hollande, and there's the Loi Macron, mm. the, the Macron um, uh, law that actually liberalized the bus market. Mm. And this went, we, we didn't know when it was going to happen. And we had, this, we had this insecurity of whether it was going to happen in two months or two years. And then all of a sudden they told us the market is open now. And it was like, it was <laughs> crazy, crazy and, and very intense. Yeah. And that, I think that was the, what made the, the, the early years um, so interesting because it was a lot of we were we were taking opportunities and we just wanted to be quick and we failed as mm. well and that was all fine but we just wanted to be quick and mm. we wanted to make sure that we're there and this was I mean when you look at the time between 2015 and 2019 this was the story we just we just went out there tried everything and, and tried to basically cover all of of Europe as quickly as we could uh, throughout those years you know what was the <clears throat> when you have joined from your uh, big consulting job and come it here what was your, uh, you have tested success. What was first success you felt yourself to your decision was right? Yeah. That's a very interesting question. And you, I mean, the, the difference to consulting is that, you know, you really see whether your decision is right or wrong. And ultimately, we, um, we saw quickly that we, you know, you hire teams, you hire great people, they start working. And then after like a few months or years, you see whether this actually works, whether you have passengers on your buses, and then finally also whether your lines and your business turns profitable. And, and when you see that, that you build something um, that, that really works and you know you have real people using real buses, that, I mean, it's, it's an amazing experience. Yeah. And you're talking about the green and all the green uh, mobility or something like that. 
When the, you and your founders uh, club together to talk about uh, shaping a brand like a green mobility, what was our mind when the idea came into mind is a green mobility or sustainability mobility, yeah. something new to the world of automobile, not at automobile, you talk about the passenger vehicle. Yeah, yeah actually. Especially the, tough competitions. Yeah, no, the, the story is interesting because when, when Flix was started, the color was actually blue. Yeah. So the buses were blue. And my Fernbus had started a little bit earlier than, than Flixbus in those very early, early days, and their color was green. Mm. Um, so after the merger, um, this was like, I mean, it was one of the great things that after the acquisition of my Fernbus, we were able to use the, the green color. So we took the best of both worlds because my Fernbus is a, it's a German word that, that you can't use internationally. So we picked Flix and Flixbus as the brands, mm. um, but used the green color, which was amazing because the, I mean, it's so telling and it's, I mean, it, it's what we want to be externally, but also internally. Our our employees love that they're working for a green cause, and I mean the color is just a perfect symbol of that. Uh, what you're talking about uh, when we have implemented green, just not sake of a color, also the meaning for mobility or sustainability. What was our first implementation to execute when a, the bus service or mobility service? To what were the few things we initially introduced as, as a as a as a symbol of uh, making the green mobility yeah. initiative? I mean the. The the main thing is if you have if you have buses that have typically something between forty and, and seventy seats, and you you try to have a good load factor so that the the emissions per person are extremely low, and then from the beginning we always made sure that the buses are very new so that they they kind of by the the latest emission standards, so that we make sure that we we minimize the the footprint, and then from the beginning we of course we we offset our our business travels. But we also give customers the opportunity within the booking to offset their trip um, so that it's carbon neutral. And that was only the start. I mean, of course, this is the, the early days, but today the, the ambition has to go towards net zero. And that's a super exciting journey. And we're kind of in, at the center of this and, and we're part of this exciting story to, to really make this happen and, and move to net, net, net zero. You, you, have, uh, you have also ambition, you have, you have a cooperation with Dalmer. Uh, to what kind of cooperation you do for the make it a more or energy efficient or the more greener Dalmeyer? You have a collaboration with them. Um, I mean, we have many different corporations mm. now. We we really want to test what's the what's the best uh, technology, what's the best mm. alternative drive drivetrain technology. So we do a lot of different tests across different alternative drivetrains. We we use here in, in Europe. Um, we look at LNG. Um, we look at hydrogen, which is more the, mm. the longer term, yeah. and then battery electric is, of course, very mm. interesting. We have um, many interesting tests running. We have one in, in Portugal, one in Chile, one in UK, um, and um, we're, we're getting closer to also launch something in India because India for battery electric is is leading globally. It's the most interesting. It, it kind of is the, the farthest ahead when it comes to building an ecosystem building the infrastructure and, and basically breaking this uh, this chicken and egg problem of do you first build the infrastructure and then people use it or do you first kind of get people to to buy EV buses but then kind of you have to build the infrastructure and India is really doing a great job there right now. Now Max about we're talking about internalization what was the first uh, intercontinental in international you did uh, as a flick specs to the apart from the European continent to other yeah, the, the first one was the US. Yeah. Um, we had, again, this was one of the opportunities we took. We had a, a team member, our former MD in France, who was relocating yeah. to the US for, for personal reasons. Yeah. And so we said, okay, let's take that opportunity mm. and, and look at the US. Mm. And he was, he was based in California mm. and looked at it, talked to everybody in the industry. And then at some point we launched the, the business there. And it took us a little bit, but then it was quite successful on the, on the West Coast. And then we uh, went to the to the East Coast as well, expanded there, mm. just got started. But then unfortunately, uh, COVID came yeah. and uh, and kind of put a, put a halt to, yeah. to travel overall. When when, when this uh, intercontinental decision you taken, uh, all your board members and founders knew. What was uh, what was the challenging for you? Like uh, you another, you become again a starter. Yeah, it's always. I mean, it's always an, a new basically start up mm. from from scratch i mean you bring a lot of experience you know you know you have, you've made a lot of yeah. mistakes that yeah. you're not going to make again but you make new mistakes yeah. and it's always like it looks very similar like 
you know, green buses on, on the streets, but it's always very different. different. You always have to relearn. And what, what we learned over time is you, you shouldn't be arrogant. Like yeah. you have to, you know, you cannot just say this worked in Germany, this yeah. worked in France, yeah. so we're going to do the same somewhere else. But you always have to understand how, how people are different, how bus partners are different and be, be mindful about that. And that's something that we, we learned over time. And I mean, in, in, um, it's, very, it's very important to be, to be good at that and to, to understand the nuances. Uh, how about uh, your, the journey to Las Vegas to uh, LA? And uh, what was the, the reaction from the, the passengers? Because this is your uh, the best, best user experience. Yeah. Because you are worked with in Europe and on different continent. And America is a little bit different from Europe too. Yeah. So what was their, their, how you felt their, 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 their expectation about the German brand to be there and how, it, how feel it? Uh, how was the reactions from their part? It was, um, it was great. I mean, the, the best feedback from customers is always if they keep coming back. And we, we wanted to have a, a simple experience, but also make it affordable and not have big terminals or anything that, that doesn't really matter to the, to the trip. And we saw that people that people liked it. People liked that um, you know that it was green. It was different. It was kind of uh, online first. And so we had a very different customer segment that was all of a sudden interested in, in taking an intercity bus than what was the the norm in the U.S. before. After that, how you now? What was the growth path in U.S. and, and South America? So the I mean the U.S. is a is a special story because mm. we I mean we built the business and we were like we had just gotten some good traction and then came COVID which was I mean very tough yeah. days I mean yeah. we we saw kind of everything we had built mm. over the years before from 2013 mm. to 2019 mm. basically like nothing was left all the buses yeah. were grounded you yeah. had just a few buses in in Poland and mm. Denmark still running so those were those were tough very days tough time. Um, and and then I mean over time I mean we we brought some of the networks back to life and there was some mobility coming back but for us then we had the great opportunity to acquire Greyhound which was something that you know if, yeah. if you think back to 2013 you always had kind of the the small startup from yeah. Germany and then you had Greyhound Gray, which Gray was Hound. like I mean it, Amazing it, this was journey. Like a, a, a crazy company yeah, and being able to acquire them was I mean a once in a lifetime uh, opportunity and also the whole integration of you know, an, an, an older um, US yeah. company and yeah. then a, a German in, startup. And yeah. it, was, it was a fantastic journey, like on so many levels. And now this is great. I mean, now we're, we have these two brands, Greyhound and Flixbus, still in the US. And it's, a, it's, it's very complimentary. We, we love how well it works because it's different customer groups that we're serving and also different parts of the mm. country that we're serving. So that has been a, a huge step. And this was when... For the first time, we were, I mean, we started as a German startup, then we were a Euro European company, and this really put us on the map also in, in North company. America. So this was the first big, big step. proof. So outside. what was any anecdote or any special thing you remind to cherish your, uh, your decision to, to being consulting? Die back again, your uh, story. And what was the, this is a European company or another German startup to acquire a North American company, a big, a big, yeah. uh, bus service company and what was your any anecdotes you feel or something like to share with that any uh, you felt proud and any moments that really challenged that point of yeah. time what was your feeling that point of time it's a first journey from intercontinental yeah. of flexbus yeah i mean in in consulting you you know you you put this on yeah. slides you yeah. say like this is how you do it this yeah, is yeah. how you do internationalization <laughs> And um, this is how you do post-merger integration. Yeah. But this was the like this was the first time I was really yeah. in charge. Like this was mine, and if if it was really me, like either being successful yeah. or failing yeah. at this. And sometimes like you wake up at night and this this kind of catches up with you, and you're like, okay, this if this goes wrong, then like this is all on me. But then I mean, it it all went it, it all went well, and this is fantastic because then ultimately, I mean, it's it's never you alone. It's always a big team, but it it's like kind of all of us here at, at Flix and then now also Greyhound that that made this work and I mean now we're you know now we're we have this big presence in the US and this is this has all been us and it I mean it 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 makes you super proud because it makes a big difference that it's really you doing this and and you know being responsible for the results it's a big difference compared to consulting yeah uh, regarding now when it started the uh, successfully California to LA or uh, La Vegas to LA mm. So what was the next step and how you now uh, position yourself in uh, American market and also Latin American market? What was now your vision and integrating the most stuff and what is your plan to execute? Yeah, I mean, we, um, 
we, we see the the green brand and the green brasses also always as bringing something fresh to the market. So we we want to do things differently, and we want that kind of we we recruit our team so that they have the spirit that they you know want to disrupt and change, and we also want this we want the customers to also feel that that you know it, it's a difference whether you take Flixbus or you take a bus company that has been around for the past 50 years. We want to make sure that we focus on a few things, but then get them really right and just make sure that customers get what they what they really want. Um, and this is, I think th this has been great. And it's also something that we we use when we enter new markets that we just want to, you know, we want to have this fresh green that disrupts the market and, you know, has a bif different uh, feel to the customers. How about the Brazil? Is always Brazil is uh, to football and a lot of crazy stuff and uh, and a German uh, brand how you felt uh, Brazilian how it looked the Brazilian market when you enter um, I mean Brazil is, is very interesting unfortunately it's not a fully liberalized mm -hmm. market so and um, we cannot we cannot grow as quickly mm -hmm. as we as we do in other markets mm -hmm. um, we I mean we've been we, we've been welcomed um, very well we have fantastic partners actually the the quality of, of taking buses in, in Brazil is very high you have these fantastic mm -hmm. yeah. um, big beds they're yeah. like first class on an airplane yeah um, so the the product is great but we I mean we're a big fan of, of liberalized mm -hmm. markets where we can you know have fair competition and and just I mean, like in soccer, yeah, the, yeah. the best team should <laughs> best win. Team should be and, absolutely. And we love that. Yes, yeah, so two, two footballing nations. Yeah. <laughs> we talk about the crazy stuff to do together. And what was the or, um, when they have to after the Americans, uh, you did it, uh, your expansion and all that. Then what was uh, your focus market uh, when you have uh, after uh, first continental ex intercontinental exp experience in um, American way? Yeah. But then after America, what is your focus to do it? Um, I mean, we we look at uh, Latin America. So we did we started with mm. Brazil, then we recently um, opened Chile, and mm. we're looking at other markets in, in mm. Latin America. But the I mean the the one big market that was always out there and looks I mean very beautiful on a map is, is obviously India, and India is I mean it's the second largest bus mar market in the world so um you have to be there it's it's 30 billion which is way bigger than the I mean yeah. the European and the the US market combined and it, so it, it was this obvious opportunity but there's many companies from from Europe that tried their luck in India that that had a hard time and and failed and so there were all these anecdotes and, and people saying it's a great market but be careful and so we we really made sure that we you know made our homework and and you know knew what we were going getting into when we when we went to india so india journey begins yeah, it, okay. yeah. okay Now we are in New Delhi. We started our Flixbus journey from Nuremberg. Now Nuremberg to New Delhi. So Max, what was the your India plan? I mean, the the India plan is huge. So we want to be the bus brand in India. So we want to, we want people to say, I take a Flixbus and not I take a bus. Um, but of course, you have to get started somewhere. And um, we got started in February in Delhi. And this was quite exciting. It was, um, I mean, everything you, you could imagine. We we had a good event lined up. We wanted to do this as part of the, the trade fair and, and announce that we're going to uh, to be there. And we had a, an outside venue. Of course, the night before, it just started raining and everything was wet. And then, like, last minute, everything came together. And it was really amazing when, like, two hours before the event, um, Andre and I arrived there. And there were still, like, people, you know, piecing together things and, and like doing the final fixes. But then it went, it went great. It was a, um, a good event and, you know, every, and, and I love that spirit that, you know, it's a lot of like, you know, hustling on the, on the kind of last minutes, but then everything came together and, and, and was good. And it was an amazing start. I mean, it's, um, you have to really relearn how to do business in India because it's, you know, the, the cities are, are very crowded. Um, the, everything is a little bit more last minute and, you know, a lot more you talk to people. And so for us, it was a, a, a big change and we had to learn it, but it was exciting. And it was, you know, there were not, there was no big issue that we faced, but a million small issues. And this is what I love about the team and also about the kind of the, the, the way people do business that 
like people just get things done like mm. maybe not in a in a kind of in, in a straight line way but like in the end it always works and that I, I think that's super inspiring and exciting and when you have a journey from Nuremberg to New Delhi within within a span of uh, 11 years yeah. uh, approximately what uh, when you or Andre was in together when just uh, have, what was the, your Andre and you have uh, initial uh, thought of initial um, experience or what was a uh, trigger you uh, do you feel that what a journey and what a country you are yeah. through bus it's a journey yeah I mean it, it comes back to you know seeing your first green bus yeah. in, a, in a country yeah. like India it, it, it's just crazy I mean it it makes you so proud that you basically made it from you know Nuremberg mm. to uh, New, New Delhi. Delhi I mean it's crazy and um, yeah and, and seeing then I mean it's always kind of seeing this 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 green bus against different backdrops and you know in in new delhi all of a sudden mm. seeing your like your first real green bus i mean it, it's it's always amazing and something that we could have never dreamt of 10 years ago and uh, what was now you know you have already stepped into india so what would be your approach to coming say example another two three years what was your plan because you have as a german company always a vision and you are going mm. to sustainable way and India is also leader, going to be leader of our our government policies and our uh, every Indians wants to believe to make uh, sustainability or, um, or appreciable. What was your uh, plan to? Uh, what would be your step by step approach to India expansion the routes or more sustainability way? Or what was your uh, now your vision and also your executive execution of your plans? Yeah, I mean. <clears throat> In India, you, I mean, you, you feel when you when you come to to Delhi, for example, you, I mean, you see the pollution, you see the the high traffic volumes, and the the bus can play a huge role in in actually f helping fix those problems. So, um, what we want to do is we want to grow the network further. We we started in February in in Delhi. We recently also launched around um, Bangalore, so basically routes from Bangalore in all directions. We want to take this to Mumbai and then the rest of India as well. I mean, there's so many cities in India mm. and um, you can connect them. And what, what we want to bring is really a, a nationwide brand and um, a certain delivery on, on a quality promise. We want to make sure that when somebody takes a, a Flixbus, they know exactly mm. how to find the bus. Mm. They know exactly what to expect. And we want to really deliver on, on, on this quality promise every single time. And I think that's very important because the market in the bus market in in India is huge, but I think it could be even bigger because taking a, a long distance bus is a is a great way of getting around. It's comfortable, it's safe. Um, so I think we we really want to kind of show to the people that we can do this. And once once we're kind of more established, um, then you of course can pivot to EV. I mean, EV in India is the future. I think there's a lot of great um, momentum around EV. And once you know what what your routes are, then you can also you can set up the charging infrastructure and you can build this ecosystem. And there's so much innovation and and so much I mean great entrepreneurship going on in India right now when it comes to to EV. That this is for me personally, it's I, I would bet a lot of money that India is going to be the first one that has a major breakthrough in um, in actually making EV work on a on a larger scale and not just on a pilot scale. And uh, you know, India is. Uh, I'm talking about a little bit a uh, uh, visionary way about India. You, you have brought your whole story from startup school days to uh, what Flix specs today. Do you have any plan to encourage Indian startups so on techno because you're a tech company? Mm. So you have something to have a collaborate Indian startup is also very tech shabby. They have a lot of innovation. You can also nudge something that any, any idea to support that eco. You are talking about. Uh, innovation ecosystem in India. Mm. Uh, do you have any plan to execute this kind of ecosystem to put Indian startup, tech startup to be or, or a sustainability to uh, collaborate with your uh, company? I mean, it's a it's a big space mm. and we're, we're just getting started. Mm. And I think particularly on the um, on the EV space, there's so much more mm. you can do. And we're, we're very open. We're looking for partners. So there's mm. um, many things that we won't do in-house, but where we want to have partnerships. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to, I mean, the, the buses um, themselves, when it comes to 
uh, charging infrastructure, being smart about mm. it when it comes to battery or even battery swapping. Mm. This, I mean, we're just getting started and um, I can only encourage everybody to look at that space and look at that space specifically in India mm. because I, I don't see that kind of momentum anywhere else in the world. So um, if I wouldn't be happy at Flix, like this would, would be what I would be doing because mm. there's just so many opportunities out there. And we as Flix, um, we're always looking for, for strong push partners. Push the boundaries. Yeah, we do push the boundaries, but we're also um, looking for, for very strong partners in that space that, can, that we can work together with. You recently have a, a signed a memorandum of understanding with the government of Rajasthan. Yeah. Can you elaborate what kind of cooperation with the government? Maybe the first state you have a cooperation. Yeah. So what kind of cooperation you look at on that and how you uh, think positive of this cooperation leads you in different scale? Yeah. No, I think that's um, that's been amazing. I mean, ultimately, um, we we had a, a long meeting and it was a, a very open and friendly discussion. Mm. And I, I I was I was extremely surprised. Like this was um, we we scheduled the meeting for half an hour and, and kept talking for a lot longer, mm. which was great because it was it, it was there was genuine interest on both sides. Mm. And ultimately, what we what we signed is basically that that we get support in. In, in setting up our structure in um, in Rajasthan, but that in return we also invest, that we work together with with local companies, which which is always our business model, and that we also provide infrastructure um, and and transportation uh, to Rajasthan to connect it better. I mean, we have the big cities, um, but then also connecting more smaller cities and making sure that people of Rajasthan have a benefit of, of having good transportation services. Yeah, I think New Delhi, Rajasthan is a road of fantastic. Yeah. And also a lot of Rajasthan's tourist spots too. So yeah. that's in a, I think it's a quite a good uh, opportunity to work on it. Yeah. You think about Flixbus also one side is a, a, a commercial journey is also, you, did you think about India's a very uh, growing very fast, the road networks, yeah. what we used to 10 years before, now are faster. A lot of corridors are coming up. And a lot of one side is the business travelers who had also choosing bus, normal passengers, also tourists. Yep. Uh, Indian, uh, if you so calculate Indian bus tourist uh, transporting by bus is a large uh, quantity. This also, can you have an idea? Do you have any focus on the transporting the tourist uh, uh, to your flex bucks in uh, Indian, uh, your route map? Yeah, I mean, of course, for us, as we're uh, now a global brand and we have a lot of customers mm. from from europe but also from the us mm. and once they travel and um th they just know kind of if there's a flix bus they can take it because mm. they they know what to expect so it gives mm. them this this notion of safety that mm. they know if it's a flix bus kind of it's going to be well run mm. and, and and safe max so what was your uh, current uh, route you operate in flix bus in india well, we're just getting started. So we have 29 routes today, mm. um, and this is mainly around Delhi and, mm. and Bangalore. Mm. But of course, that's growing significantly. We have big ambitions, and mm. already next year, the, the network is going to be significantly bigger. And uh, another new initiative, you have taken the Flex train. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious to know, curious to know what about this project. It's again a startup, train yeah. startup. Yeah, it's a, it's a big startup and mm. also has tremendous potential. Mm. Um, this is focused on on Germany mm -hmm. for now. Mm -hmm. We're, I mean, looking for yeah. for other markets, but this is, I mean, no, no, just bus to train. No. So it it takes like everything takes longer. Yeah. You can't just buy a train and no, 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 no. It. <laughs> no, no. Um, no, it's it's super exciting, mm -hmm. and I think the the potential is is enormous. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it. I mean, it, train is is a is a great way of getting around as mm -hmm. well. Particularly here in Germany, um, there's still not enough trains and. It's a it's a great market for us to to venture into. And when the Flix A will come, uh, that won't happen. <laughs> no, it's not. So, we, so you're only on uh, you're allowed to on the on the ground. You yeah, always want to uh, keep our feet at the ground. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It doesn't fit our sustainability vision. So mm. we we try to move people mm. into into trains and buses, um, and yeah, there, there won't be Flix Air. So what's uh, Flix? Uh, how Flix can contribute to the world of sustainability issues? I mean, it's a. Um, I, I mean, it, it's a. It's an ecosystem that has to come together. People need to be incentivized to not use a, a personal car, um, and mass transportation needs to be needs to be available and needs to be convenient to use. And Flixbus plays a big role there because we can, for the long distance piece, um, we we can create a very dense network. And using a Flixbus is very easy. So it, it's an important puzzle piece of, of this mobility ecosystem mm -hmm. of the future. 
And this is already true for diesel buses. I said we we use modern diesel buses, so it's already great for the environment. But of course, as we push this to to zero emissions, to to battery electric vehicles or other um, alternative drives, that's of course perfect. And then, um, kind of working together with other mobility players, at some point you will have this this kind of this this puzzle where you know people can just use sustainable means of transportation and don't use their private car anymore. And uh, again, back to India. Uh, India and Germany has a lot of cooperation on the skill development issues in yeah. all the countries. You have a lot of mobility you're talking about. Do you have also have a plan to uh, skill development issues, particularly the mobility industry in India, which is a little bit disorganized? Yeah, I mean, um, I am. I mean, we have a local team, and the, mm -hmm. the local team is is ever growing and. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's always interesting to to work together because I've been, to be honest, very impressed with the the, the quality of the team in India that that we have. I mean, it's 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 a super strong team, and and people are entrepreneurial, and people are very like they they don't accept good; they just want to be even better and better. Like they're very ambitious, um, and I also feel that um, as, as a German company, we also bring certain ways of doing things and. I like. I always have this vision that ultimately you have a great blend of you know the the spirit and the energy and the intelligence um, you have in India, and then kind of bringing this together. I think you know we're both 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 sides, India and Germany, are going to learn and, and ultimately be a lot better coming out of this. So now my uh, next question would be: What next on Flixbox? Uh, that's a, um, that's always an interesting question. We have a, a couple of markets that we're looking at, um, so we we want to continue the the global expansion. Um, when you when you look at the map of the world, there's still a lot of uh, a lot of white spots that we want to also paint green. So I mean, we're not done yet. There's a, a lot more to come, and um, we we've been successful so far. And um, I mean, for us, there's no reason why we would stop now. We want to um, we want to grow a lot more. Actually, we want to grow a lot more in India. I mean looking at India in itself with 1.4 billion I and mean, we're just getting started. I mean, this is a, a whole new world in itself, but then also adding adding new markets to the list. So Nuremberg to Nidalee, what a journey Flixbus has, yeah. your founders and you too. Thank you, Max, for wonderful insight of Nuremberg to Nidalee journey and blue to green too. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much.